So here I have uh, a piece of corrugated cardboard that I've cut out that's going to be the base piece of the airship fin that I'm creating. And I really like to use that thin, what they call E-flute cardboard, corrugated. And you can see that it's corrugated, very thin, but it's corrugated. Um, I like to use that that comes from, huh, recognize this, pizza boxes. So I've been teased quite a few times because, you know, I'm quite a dumpster diver and I'll, and I'll go and find uh, everybody's old pizza boxes. But these cut really well. They're not too awful thick. The um, corrugation inside is very, uh, very thin. So, I mean, it's kind of easy to, to work with. It doesn't make these fins too big and bulky. Some of the uh, pizza box cardboard is actually uh, eighth inch, so it's like double that thickness. And I use that too on some things, but um, I really like this thin um, e-fluid. And if you put a if you put a um, a rule around there, it's actually very very thin, like like less than a, a sixteenth of an of an inch. Actually, it's uh, you know a little it's a little thinner than the sixteenth, um, and that works really well. So what I'll do is I'll lay that down, and then I will take a piece of the painted cardboard that I've been telling you about, and if I need to run a nail down the edge of it to flatten that ridge out, then I'll do that. That's uh, that's pretty easy. You see, it knocks that that corner edge down. Um, and then I'll, I'll just pick a, a square edge. So for this one, you know, that whole top edge is nice. And, and you'll see that, you know, I've got angled cuts and everything. So to make that run off the edge, that of course I have to physically run it off. Now, I don't always do like one whole strip. Sometimes I'll take the scissors and, or, or whatever, uh, exacto. And I cut that, I'm pretty good at eyeball and square, so I cut that piece. And then, you know, it's going to go here. And then just to kind of add some visual interest, what I'll do is take a piece of one of the other colors. So like, like the one that's kind of a uh, bronzy color, and I'll, and I'll use that one to finish out the length. Why? Because it's a little different tone. It's a little different look, and it gives those what are going to look like riveted panels on there, some character. If you look at uh, any kind of a, a, a ship model, um, whether it be a spaceship, a sea-going earth ship, a whatever, any time that they had welded panels on those ships, if you backed off and looked before the thing was painted, you can see a patchwork difference in the tone and sometimes the finish of those panels and it's very interesting to look at and so the same thing happens when I put uh, these panels on one of these uh, airship fins so to glue them on there I'm using one of those really thick um, white glues that well you know the the brand everybody knows is the tacky glue and that works really well it's just a a very thick pva glue and hey we all know that you know pva glues uh paper and cardboard together pretty well so i'm going to lay that first piece on there careful to kind of go right off the edge with it because then i'll have to trim it and I'm lining it up with the top of this cut base piece. Now, I have to kind of hold that down sometimes. You can do whatever you want to hold it down a little bit. Fortunately for me, the tabletop here is metal, so I've got these magnets that I'll use to like drop down on there. They work so well to kind of hold pieces down. And I'm going to put a piece of the more bronze looking um, painted board down there and just butt it right up against the other one, line it up. And here's the other thing, if it's not lined up perfectly and there's a gap in there that you didn't expect, um, so what? 
it gives the piece more character and and like I said once you um, once you get a patina on that it's gonna really look cool that there are gaps and irregularities I mean that's kind of what makes things look real if you want to come right down to it it's the imperfections that give things character and and realism it's the it's the patina it's it's the metal that now is no longer perfect that that makes things look more realistic and believable so I mean I welcome a little bit of irregularity a little bit of goofing with regards to lining up with edges and stuff it would seem at first like that would be a horrible thing to do it's not it winds up looking really cool all right so then I'm going to take another piece of the the copper and again I'm going to run a nail down the edges just to kind of just to kind of round those off a little bit and then I'll put that on right kind of underneath and sometimes even if I'm not changing the color sometimes even if I'm just needing to, to you know continue with another piece um, I'll still uh, use the same color or sometimes instead of having just one big long piece like that uh, I'll break it up by you know cutting it here and still just putting two pieces down that are the same basic color because the the edges give it a little interest let's try one of the more um, gold looking pieces right here and we'll lay that we'll lay that down I probably could have just kept that one copper and, and often I'll just I'll just leave them there until they until they dry and then I'll go back and just and, and trim those off and then I you know obviously have other pieces to use so so that's basically how I, I build these okay so now those pieces are all in place and they're all nice and well reasonably dry and you can see how that kinda creates a, a, a big sheet and what I do then is flip that over and just take standard scissors and run right along the edge of that fin and cut all the extra off and then follow this contour do the same thing right on out same thing here and same thing up in this corner and then on this edge as well and then for this curve you know I would use an exacto knife so that's a little easier than trying to cut a curve with a pair of scissors so I'll run right down along that edge with the exacto to cut my curve and looks like I need to, there we go and what we wind up with is a cool fin that is if I tilt it you can see the different uh, tones in the in the metallic paint but now I'll flip it over and do the same on the other side and then when that's done uh, I'll, I'll trim that up too and then I'll have a, a two-sided fin that's got some extra thickness to it has different uh, color uh, metallic panels on it and I will patina that and then go and and put rivets on there so that it looks like those panels were all riveted onto that fin and it winds up looking like a million bucks it just it really looks awesome so that's basically how I use repurposed whatever cardboard fiberboard you name it pizza box cardboard and I paint and build something that looks seriously metallic and and when it's done it, it just it looks amazing and uh, those wind up being a really popular fin on the steampunk airship for something that looks a little more industrial and not quite so Victorian which some people really like I'm Stephen Smith of Art Smith Craftworks I would appreciate it if you would go to my channel 
and subscribe give me a like share it around to all your maker friends let them see what uh, other people are doing and uh yeah see you next time